How are all of you lovely people doing today? My name is John and welcome to another beautiful zombies commentary. Today just might be one of the greatest days in the zombies community. We finally have some answers to something that has been discussed hundreds of times within the zombies community. I can't count the number of comments I have on this one subject and no, I'm not talking about banana colada. I'm talking about the life of Pablo. However, this is not Kanye West's album we're talking about. This is Pablo the Mexican test subject. We finally have an answer to who he is and how he fits into the zombie storyline. This has been something that I would say is the bane to my channel, the bane to my existence. He became such a nuisance that I actually blocked him from my comment section. However, I am lifting that block just for today because we finally have some information I thought you guys would be thrilled to know about this. It all begins with this Call of the Dead radio. Take a listen. Target tree 1471, date September 2nd, 1845. Die. Another day, another fair. This time, subject N3WP just played me in the floor. The Russian subject still smells like urine. Even after he was given a bath, will be loused twice. And I think I might have killed the specimen from Mexico. His spleen is on the floor and he's not moving anymore. I can verify the certainty, however. That the barrier is not located in the street. Dr. Matthew, you know, matters of course. I wonder what you might think of the experiment. Girl. This was our introduction to the Mexican test subject, and this is all we ever got of him for years. Even though we only had one little radio mention about the Mexican test subject, it sparked the community's interest, and many people started to make theories. Some people suggested he was a blacked out portrait in Kino de Toten, other people suggested he would make an appearance in Black Ops 3. The theories go on and on and on, unfortunately. Things started to get interesting though prior to the release of Origins. Sherrick started to release many letters from the field which explained how our characters got to Origins. This letter from Rick Toffin really caught our interest in regards to the Mexican test subject. It reads like this. The journal of Pablo Marianos has been a most valuable source of information. We now stand on the edge of a brave new world. Our survey of the site has led us to believe that this may be the location to hold the largest single source of 115. And then it goes on, but this is what really got interesting. He mentions Pablo Marianos. Now Pablo Marianos is a Mexican name, and this doesn't specifically mean he's speaking about the Mexican test subject. He could be speaking about somebody Spanish, he could be speaking about somebody Mexican, it could be anybody. But here we have a person with a Spanish name who has information about El in 115 and they have his um they have his journal so this was interesting however nothing really came from this and time went on we had origins we had the giant we had shadows of evil and that was it the community basically forgot about this letter however the mexican test subjects started to come up again in der eisendrache the first mention of him is literally plastered on the wall it's pretty hard to miss if you go into Rick Toffin or Maxis's room, I'm not quite sure whose it is, you can see some projections playing on the wall. And one of them is actually of a spleen. Now let's think, where did we last hear a spleen? Wait a minute. Oh, hold up. There was a spleen mentioned in the Call of the Dead radio. The spleen belonged to the Mexican test subjects. Now upon further inspection of this image, you'll notice that it clearly mentions that this is a test subject who is deceased. And then there is also a name labeled on the side. That name reads Pablo. Now the pieces are starting to come together. We have a Mexican test subject who Rick Toffin was doing work on the spleen. He was trying to find access into the subconscious of the human mind. They wanted to control zombies. That's why they were doing all this testing. They were testing on the Mexican test subject in an effort to figure out how they can create an undead army. And Rick Toffin thought maybe the key was in the spleen. Unfortunately, it wasn't and the test subject died and now they just had this spleen. And then we're also given this name Pablo, and we have a spleen labeled Pablo from a test subject. And this sort of starts to bring the pieces together. Pablo Marianos was the Mexican test subject, 
He was somebody who was doing research with Element 115, and he actually found all the large deposits of Element 115 in Bar le Duc, France, where Origins takes place. Now, somehow, in some way, shape, or form, he actually was captured by Group 935. I don't understand why Group 935 couldn't have used him to like help in their research. He could have been a member of the group, but for some reason they didn't include him. Instead, they chose to test on him. And Richthofen accidentally killed him when doing work on his spleen. However, they did use his journal, which I guess they were able to get their hands on, and that led them to Origins, which is really where the sort of new story of Primus starts to kick off and take place. So suddenly, the Mexican test subject, a character who, honestly, to me, was like the bane of my existence, suddenly proves pretty important to the storyline. Another interesting thing to note about this image of the Mexican test subject spleen is that you can actually see a black sun printed onto his spleen. This is the logo of the Keepers and quite possibly the Vril. The Vril, of course, derive their energy from the Black Sun, and we're starting to think that maybe the Keepers are the Vril. Now, why is their logo on his spleen? Is the Mexican test subject a Keeper? Was he sent there by the Keepers and this is their mark? Did they leave this mark on the spleen after their death? It's, there's a lot of questions surrounding this, and hopefully this is something Treyarch continues to explore in their later maps, but it really makes us reconsider the Mexican test subject. Maybe he does serve some value and purpose to the storyline. That's not the end of it though, we also have a cipher about the Mexican test subject. The cipher can be found in a pile of hay near Juggernaug, and it reads like this. The last test subject, the Mexican, died, but during the autopsy. I have discovered the key to create the army that we seek. We are now ready to capture the four subjects identified in Report 44. This is a pretty important letter, but not for the reason you might think. What's important is when Richthofen says, I have discovered the key to create the army that we seek. He's referring to the zombie army that Group 935 has been trying to create pretty much since the discovery of zombies and Element 115 creating the zombies. What's interesting though is now there's a discrepancy in the story. The original radio about the Mexican test subject said that his spleen clearly did not hold the key to unlocking the army that they're looking for. I can verify the certainty, however, that the barrier is not located in the sea. But now it says that during the autopsy, they have found the key to creating the army. These are two completely different and opposite outcomes. Now this kind of plays into the multiverse theory a little bit. The multiverse theory suggests that for every possible outcome, it is enacted in another universe. So for example, you might be looking for a snack. You can either have a piece of cookie or you can have a piece of cake. And in one universe, you eat that cookie, but in another universe, you eat that cake. The universe, in a sense, splits. What if we're seeing a diverging of universes? In one universe, the spleen actually did hold the key, and in another universe, it didn't. And this is where these two universes possibly broke off in different ways. Another interesting thing is, the Mexican test subject was studied on before we started tampering with time. All this happened before Richthofen basically disbanded Group 935 and attempted to assassinate Maxis and Samantha. So we weren't messing with that period of time. How do we have these discrepancies? Especially with something like the spleen holding the key to an undead army. This isn't something you can easily tamper with through time and space. But we still have time and space changing before our very own eyes. Possibly it has something to do with the keepers. Of course they have marked the spleen. Maybe this is a sign that they have changed the future and in this world group 935 now does hold the key to an undead army which is something they've never done before ladies and gentlemen i apologize for ever bad mouthing the mexican test subject pablo marianos my apologies go out to you because clearly the life of pablo is more important than we ever realized and now that he has been brought to light in der eisendrache there are many different avenues to explore with him and i find it quite amazing. We have time and space being tampered with in a way that we can't even control or predict, and it opens
opens up several other avenues. Initially, we thought we were working in many different universes, and then we revised our theory and thought maybe we're working in the original universe again, just trying to rewrite history. But now we clearly have two different universes because we have two different outcomes. And this, I think, is one of the first times we've seen different changes between the universes in ways that we can't really access or we can't really affect, which to me is mind-boggling. And there are so many new questions that have popped up because of the Mexican test subject. I wanted to bring this to light to the community because one, I felt a little bit salty after all this information came to light, and two, I thought you guys might be interested in the identity of the Mexican test subject. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, he is Pablo Marianos. He is a researcher. He was the one who figured out the large develop deposits of element 115 in Bar the Duke, France, and he might hold the key to the undead army. With that, we'll be wrapping up this commentary. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more like it, please do subscribe. I upload multiple zombie videos every week, and if you enjoyed this one, I'm sure you'll like the next one. I'm always diving into the zombie storyline and exploring it, and trust me guys, it's about to get good from here on out, and you don't want to miss a bit, so be sure to subscribe. Have a wonderful day, though, and bye.